Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and even good night, depending on where you are joining from. My name is Eddie Jemba, and I work for the Red Cross and Red Crescent Climate Center, and I am excited and delighted to be your host uh, today, or the facilitator for the day. Now, uh, we would like uh, we would like we would like you to introduce yourself in a chat. Uh, so basically, saying uh, your name, uh, your title, and uh, you know the national society that or the partner national society that you work for, or the uh, technical reference center that you work for. So whichever that you work for. Um, otherwise, it's a big, big, big time pleasure to be facilitating this workshop. In case you joined without knowing, it's the Common Alerting Protocol Workshop. So welcome to it. And uh, Karini, we are good to go. Okay. So we have a day that is quite well thought through and therefore we will be taking you uh, through the agenda of the day. Um, for now, allow me to invite Ned. Allow me to invite Ned to introduce uh, the workshop. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Eddie. Much appreciated. So good morning and good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm looking forward to the next uh, three and a half hours with you all. Um, so as Eddie mentioned, we're here to talk about early warning and early action. Um, I think you all uh, should have been apparent from the title, um, but more specifically, we're talking about information about hazards being delivered at the right time in an understandable way um, that allow people to take action to get out of harm's way. Um, so very practical workshop. I mean, we all know disasters are getting more and more frequent, extreme weather is happening, communities are being affected. Um, this is a growing problem. Um, and, and early warning and acting on those early warnings is extremely important. Um, so the IFRC, the Global Disaster Preparedness, Center and the Climate Center have all partnered uh, with USAID and Google um, to support early warning and early action within the Red Cross and Red Crescent Network. So at a very high level, um, this collaboration is focused on two things. Um, the first is to increase the utilization of the common alerting protocol by national governments. Um, so the common alerting protocol is a digital standard designed to allow us to more or allow governments to more easily share hazard information. Um, the second key objective of this collaboration is to expand the use of reliable, actionable messages. Um, so ensuring that the information about these risks include information about okay. what we do. Um, so you'll hear a lot of references to the IFRC public, public awareness and public education messages today. Um, as well as the what now messages. Those are essentially the same thing. They're actionable messages um, developed by the Red Cross and governments that people can use to, to act. Um, so with all this in mind, just to quickly highlight the objectives of the workshop. First of all, we want you to get excited about the common alerting protocol, about the what now pop a messages. Um, we want to show you how these tools tie in to all the early warning, early action initiatives that are taking place in the movement, so anticipatory action, uh, the risk-informed early action partnership, um, forecast-based financing, forecast-based action. There's just a lot going on right now around early warning and early action, and we see uh, the CAP and the What Now Pape messages as a key part of this. Um, and then finally, we want you to enable you all to uh, identify opportunities on how you can push this forward with your national societies. Um, so we've got a lot of experts with us here today, um, a lot of interaction planned. Um, we'll have a presentation from Google later in the day. We'll have a presentation from the Risk-Informed Early Action Part Partnerships, different national societies will be pre presenting. 
Um, and maybe just to know, we've got a CAP expert with us, a number of CAP experts, but one in particular I'd like to mention, Elliot Christian. Um, he's been an advocate for CAP for the last 10, 15 years, um, really kind of the godfather of CAP, if you will. So hopefully um, you'll have a chance to interact with Elliot over the course of the day. Um, so really happy to have you all here. Thank you very much for joining, and I will hand it back to Eddie to give us an overview of the agenda. Over to you, Eddie. Thank you very much, Ned. And uh, it's really a pleasure to see lots of participants from different places uh, around the world. So today's agenda is as follows. And I hope this is what you were expecting, or maybe in case not, we will also have an, uh, an opportunity to tell us in the chat. Okay, so we will uh, have uh, the, an introduction to the common alerting protocol, then we'll move on to actionable messaging for the uh, for alerting. We will get uh, some national societies uh, to share their experiences, but even before that, we will also highlight uh, the role of national societies in emergency alerting. Uh, we will have a break. It is important to break and then you know, do some stretches. Other people like yoga. Other people just like to take a glass of water. Um, and then we will move on uh, to talk about partnership building for early warning and early action, risk-informed early action partnership. And then this, you know, I think uh, for me, this was the unexpected Google partnership for the National Society messaging. Uh, another break and finally we'll have some hands-on working sessions so in case uh, you get inspired from uh, the sessions before and then you need to dig deeper um, then you'll sign up for one of the working sessions we will end with a recap and then next steps through the breaks we will be listening to some music. I mean, I'm biased, I selected it. So you are not able to participate in selecting the, the music. Remember, we are still adapting to the online virtual workshops. And therefore it is important to have some rules and then follow them. We are going to be recording this workshop for the participants who are unable to join and for those who would just like to rewatch and listen and get some insights. So um, hopefully this is okay with you. Um, this workshop is going to be recorded. We will also be taking a virtual group photo. I am super excited about that one because I used to, I, to like the in-person group photos, you know, at the beginning of the workshop or somewhere at the end. Um, we highly recommend that we keep muted when we are not talking so that they are, we minimize interruptions. But when you need to talk, please, that one is also highly recommended. You may raise your hand just like I did using the reaction icon down there. They'll give you an option. And um, as much as possible, would also like to get many, 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 many questions that you have, the comments and the chat will continue to be open. Please do that. Uh, use the chat to put in your questions and answers. Um, yeah, I think the final one is reminder that you can use template in meeting, invite email to keep notes during uh, uh, the session. Okay, um, yeah. Any questions or clarification needed on that? If all is well, please give me a thumbs up, then we can proceed. Okay, I see a couple of them coming through. All right, thank you very much. Um, with those thumbs up, then we need to, uh, to proceed. And by going into our agenda, the very first one. Allow me to invite 
Tiziana, who is head of climate and migration and resilience at IFRC, who will be our first speaker for the day. Uh, and she'll tell us how important is early warning, early action. Uh, Tiziana, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for this uh, great introduction. And first of all, for giving me the opportunity to set the tone for what I'm sure is going to be a very productive workshop. So greetings to all the colleagues uh, uh, joining us today from wherever you are. Um, as, you, as you know, the um, IFRC and its Red Cross and Red Crescent National Societies have indeed a long-standing commitment to early warning and early action. And this is uh, translated in, in, in many ways. It is, of course, an important component of our traditional disaster preparedness, disaster readiness approach. And has translated um, in the form of uh, global guidance. Um, I'd like to uh, maybe just uh, refer to the uh, guiding principles for community early warning system that was were produced in 2012, but also to some of the uh, most recent uh, global tools, mechanisms, and approaches uh, that fall under the umbrella term of anticipatory action. And here I'm of course referring to very familiar words and now that we're using like forecast-based financing. And uh, uh, for instance, the use of draft for, for anticipatory action that uh, are becoming more and more part of, uh, of, our, of our work when we are referring to early warning and early action. But I would say uh, this long-standing commitment uh, is primarily visible in the work of your respective national societies, both at national and at community level. And we have more and more evidence of this. For instance, we have carried out a study this year that was concluded in July that shows that 93 national societies uh, um, who have been part of the study reported undertaking activities to support early warning systems during the past 10 years. So we also uh, saw from this study that some 30 national societies are actually implementing forecast-based financing approaches in close co collaboration with their national hydrometeorological services. So as you can see, the Red Cross Red Crescent is indeed active, and I would even say exceptionally well-placed to address the wide range of efforts related to early warning and early action. At the community level in particular, national societies are working with communities to increase their capacity to receive and to respond to warnings and alerts. And through the network of volunteers, we can ensure that these warnings are received, they are understood, and they lead to action um, that makes sense. So it is really about this last mile focus uh, that the Red Cross and Red Crescent Network is known for. And this is where we are good at, if I can say so. But we also work at the global and at national level. For example, uh, we work with forecasting entities to develop triggers that allow the release of anticipatory funds for national society programming. And we are coordinating with governments to establish harmonized public awareness messages that can be sent out to provide people with actionable guidance on what to do before, during, and after an event. So in other words, there's a lot happening uh, when we talk about early warning and early action. And today we indeed have a a great chance to hear from all of you and to go deeper into what is or should be the Red Cross and Red Crescent role in, in this arena. We have a chance to learn from each other, to share ideas, to continue this learning journey, and to really support the enhancement of what we call end-to-end, people-centered early warning system, so that we really ensure strong linkages between what is done at a national level when it comes to early warning systems and what we should be doing at a community level with the end users of such systems. Um, there are some challenges, of course, that we should be aware of. One of the common challenges is about the fact that community early warning systems are not always connected to national early warning systems. So here, indeed, it will be really good to explore how can we address uh, these challenges? How can we strengthen those linkages? And, and what are uh, the experiences that you can share in, in this sense? Another challenge is the fact that national societies' roles are heavily influenced, of course, 
fight the government's and national society's capacities and resources um, to work in this uh, in 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 this uh, area of focus and continuous investments in institutional strengthening are also needed. So if we really truly want to connect the last mile and the first, first mile, uh, I'm sure we're gonna hear a lot about these, uh, these um, uh, important words. So to conclude, uh, the workshop today is indeed an opportunity for everyone to learn about the tools, the approaches, the challenges, but also the opportunities that, that we can explore together in supporting effective early warning and early action. The intention is to hear from everybody and it's about, you know, really at the end of the day, ensuring that people in harm's way receive reliable and actionable warnings at the right time so that we can continue to save lives and livelihoods. Thank you so much and wishing you a very fruitful uh, workshop during the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tiziana. And usually when I'm facilitating, I send greetings from my grandmother. And my grandmother usually says that, hey, show some gratitude for someone who does an excellent job. So I would like to invite the participants to just uh, clap using the icon of clapping, you know. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tiziana, for those reflections and for setting this in. Okay.